And there's a common sort of idea out there that Trump is a toddler, he's a child. Acting like a toddler having a major meltdown. Acting as a child. The mind of a toddler. He's a giant toddler and there's nothing going around inside his head. And what people mean by that, I think, is that he has poor impulse control. Something the way he's wired where he can't help himself. Can't seem to help himself. He can't control himself. He just can't seem to help himself, Howie. And it's a way, it seems to me, of trivializing some of the wrongdoing that you see from Donald Trump. When he said to Billy Bush, Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. He's not saying he doesn't understand the consequences of his actions. He's saying that based on his experience in life, there will not be consequences. And that's actually really different from a child's perspective on the world. A real toddler misbehaves uh, all the time. I mean, Jose, uh, earlier this week, he stuck his foot in a serving bowl. He sometimes likes to uh, try to attack small birds at the park. But if you explain the rules to him, he normally follows them. It's a constructive process and Trump is old. He's, he's been around, he's not learning. Donald Trump is a man who has had a lot of different brushes with the law. Uh, the very first time he appeared in, in the New York Times, it was because there was a federal investigation into illegal racial discrimination in the houses that he was running. Soon after the election, he paid a $25 million settlement for defrauding students at a fake university. The first time he tried to move beyond the real estate business, he had a casino in Atlantic City, the Trump Taj Mahal. He built the casino with a lot of loans, a lot of debts. And in December of 1990, he comes to this moment of crisis where he doesn't have the funds to make the payment and he's going to lose the casino if he can't cover the interest. So what happens is his father sends one of the family attorneys down in a car to Atlantic City with over $3 million and he has him go buy chips from the casino, giving cash to the Taj Mahal. So in effect, that's a loan. And eventually the New Jersey gaming authorities ruled and he had to pay a fine for it. But if you look at the sort of balance of considerations, right? If he hadn't taken the illegal loan, he would have lost the whole casino. With the illegal loan, he pays a fine, but it's not that big of a fine and he keeps the casino. And that's basically the impunity lifestyle of Donald Trump. This calculated decision was made that to break the rules would be better for Donald Trump even if he got caught. Looking for loopholes and working with smart lawyers to find them is what you're supposed to do. We have very much normalized a culture of rule breaking in American business and Trump is, is an extreme example of that, but extremes tell you something about what's going on beneath the surface.